Hey, what's up everybody? Mark Price here, devslopes.com, and today is the day where you get to build your very first Android app. Sounds pretty cool. No experience needed. Let's go ahead and open up Android. You should already have it installed. I'll find mine by just command space and Android here on the Mac. There we go, Android Studio. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a project that does percentages. You know, what is 15% of this number? Uh, not super complex, but we'll write some code, we'll make some UI. So go ahead and click Start a New Android Studio Project. And you can call yours whatever you wanted. I'm gonna say Math Sucks. That's gonna be the name of my app, Math Sucks, okay? And company domain is the name of the company that you'll be putting in there, which is your own or whatever name you want to put in there, no big deal. Project location is obviously the project location. Currently mine is just stored in Android Studio Projects. You can put that wherever you want. Click Next. Now this is important, okay? API level, how many users you want to support. If you notice here, by targeting API 16 and later, your app will run on approximately 92.8% of the devices. All right, the higher up I go, the lower it goes, less than 1% on Android's newest version, right? So what it means is if you, this is the minimum SDK. So basically they have to have this, they have to have this version on their phone in order to run this app. So we cover about 92% on Jelly Bean. Ice Cream Sandwich goes up a little higher, but uh, 4.1 introduced a lot of cool features with Jelly Bean. So let's just go ahead and do that. We're gonna skip these other ones here and click Next. And there's lots of different templates here. We are gonna do blank activity, okay? And the reason why I'm choosing blank activity instead of empty activity is because it has this cool action button with some event listeners. And I like to use existing code to reference um, code snippets. Uh, sometimes when I forget, like how to set listeners and things like that, because uh, I was I tend to forget syntax occasionally. So I'm just gonna set blank activity, click next, there we go. And your activity name, this is the main activity for your application, kind of the starting point here. You can name this accordingly. Ours is just gonna be called main activity because we're only gonna have one and we're not gonna click use a fragment at this time. And click finish. Okay, our project is open. We've got the tip of the day, which I don't care about at this time. I'm gonna click close and it's going to load up the content underscore main which is the XML layout for our project, meaning this is gonna be the user interface for our project, there it goes. Okay, so here's our project. Let's do a little bit of setup first. What I want you to do is hover over these icons here, okay, this one, SDK Manager, okay, and you should have the SDKs installed as part of the installation process. If you don't have these installed, you're gonna to wanna to install the different SDK versions that are available. Okay, you can click those buttons there. So just make sure you've got, you know, I've got mine down to API level 17 and that's okay. And then you wanna go over this AVD manager here. Okay, and these are your virtual emulators, your virtual devices. And I have one because I've created one. But if you don't have one, make sure you click create a virtual device. And I would suggest just pick, picking the Nexus 5 for now. It's a good generic phone click next, and you're gonna to wanna to set, let's see, there it is. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we've got all the other details on it available, so click next. And this is where you can set, it's like uh, advanced settings here, you can set how much RAM it has and things like that. I'm, not, I'm gonna hide these advanced settings here. And what I would do is I would say use host GPU, which just use the GPU of the actual computer that you're running on. This never actually used to be available to Android. It used to actually take forever to load the emulators and it would run actual device specs, but I'd rather it run off my computer specs because I want it to run fast because I'm doing lots of testing and iteration. So that all looks good and you can go ahead and click finish. I'm not gonna do that since I already have a device and once your device is on here, it means you're good to go and ready to start developing apps. So let's take a look here. We are in content underscore main. Okay, over here on the left-hand side, you should see some files. If you don't, if it's collapsed, you can click this icon here that says project and you can expand it to see these files here. Okay, and 
you'll notice you have a RES, that's for short for resources, and these are resource files, and a resource file represents your application, the user interface of a screen or an item. In this case, our main activity has its own user interface file, and what it does is, if you look over here on the right-hand side, it includes this uh, right here, this include right here, it includes an entire layout file. So this main file, this activity main layout file, it includes a whole entire layout file, which is going on top of it. So we actually can't click hello world on here um, because it's not, it's not actually on this layout. This action button is, and so is the toolbar, as you can see right here, toolbar, and this action view right here, this custom view. But click double click content underscore main dot XML, and now we can access our hello world and we can start adding user interface. So this is the screen we're gonna be working with. This is the layout editor for Android. You can also do this via XML, but in this video, we're just gonna do it here with drag and drop user interface, which is really cool. One more thing to point out. If you click your Java folder here, okay, you've got one for tests, unit tests. We're not doing any of those today. And so we want this one here, com.devslopes.mathsucks, and double click main activity. I'm going to expand this here. Your Android will not probably look like this because I spent a couple hours customizing the styles and fonts and how this looks. To be honest, I kind of made it look like Xcode because I love Xcode uh, and I like white themes. Um, but what I do want to show you here is go to Android Studio Preferences and you can go to Appearance and you can change the theme from default to Darkula if you want it dark which I'm sure most of you will choose because I'm the only person I know that codes with a white background. So anyway, if you want this, it is available. Uh, just message me on the chat rooms or find me somewhere else and I will send this, these, uh, these setting themes uh, to you. So enough talking, let's go ahead and talk, well, let's go ahead and just talk about what we're gonna be designing. So um, there's a website that I refer to frequently when I'm too stupid to remember how to do percentages. Uh, sometimes I just forget. So what I like to do is go to Google and say, you know, what is X percent of Y? And then there's this awesome website here called Calculator Soup. And they, they have different types of calculations you can do with percentages. So what is X, what is this percent of this number? Or what is the percent of this number? So if I said, what is 10% of 100? And I click Calculate y equals 10. Okay, so it's just a calculator. That's all it is and uh, for percentages. And we're going to do the same thing, but on an Android app. And we're going to keep it in its simplest form. So very cool stuff. Let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we know that we're going to need to get, just like in that website here, we know we're, we know we're going to have to have a field here and a second field for the number. So one field for the percentage, a second field for the number, and a calculate button. Okay, and also we're gonna have some nice labels here, you know, that do the same thing. What is this percent of this number? And then we need a place to display the result. Okay, so we're gonna need all those things. So that's what we're gonna build first here in our layout editor. So go over to your content main XML and double click it. And we're gonna have some fun. So this hello world, you can actually just click and drag it and we're gonna move it right there in the middle. Okay, and it's a little bit small. And what I want this to be is the actual result field, the total field. Okay, so let's scroll down here on the bottom right hand side. These are the properties that are available. And I highly suggest you look at the different things you can do and play around with them. Okay, don't expect someone like me to go and tell you every little thing. You need to go around and play around with these things here. And what we want to do is just make it bigger. So I'm up here at the top. Instead of wrapping the content for the width, I want to change this by clicking the arrows here to feel parent. Okay, so now it is filling the parent. Of course, it's not centered, which I don't like. So I'm gonna scroll down till I see something called alignment, text alignment right here. And I can click this drop down arrow and select center. Okay, one thing I also don't like is it's a little bit small. So let's see if we can find a text size field, which there is one right here. And we're just gonna enter a number and I'm gonna say 50. And that looks, that looks okay. And by the way, that's 50 DP, okay density pixels, uh, it's not necessarily uh, pixel per pixel, it's, it'll be relative to the size of the screen. So that's good. 50, that's what we want. And text is hello world. Well, by default, we just want it to be zero, kind of like it's a calculator. So we'll just leave that there. And this is starting to look really nice. Although one thing we do need to do is give it an ID because we need to reference this in the code 
So when you actually click the calculate button, it knows which field to grab and put the value in. Okay, so I'm gonna give it ID and I'm gonna call this total, we'll call this the total uh, text view. This is a text view, okay? This is a text view. If you're familiar with iOS, this would be the same thing as UI label, all right? So there's a text view. Okay, so we got the total view there. Now what do we need? We need some type of other view, actually, that text view that will tell us you know, what is, well, basically, let's look at our design scheme right here. We need something that, is, that says this, what is, what is. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go over here on the left-hand side. This is the palette that has different widgets and things and such in it, okay? If yours is not there, you can access it by clicking the palette button. And we are going to look for a text view. In fact, we can just click large text and I'm going to put it right here in the center. And looks good to me. Let's go ahead and double click it. And for the text inside of it, I just want it to say what is. Okay. No big deal. Now we need a field, right? To actually enter the percentage, like something that's editable. So we're going to do that with a an edit text. So let's see if we can find that here, our edit text. Here we go. Just plain text is fine. Actually, we could do a number. This will, this will keep it formatted for decimals, which is what we want. So let's drag that number decimal here. Okay, I'm going to drag it over till it's centered. And that's looking pretty good. Don't you think that we should have a placeholder in there that basically says enter a percentage or enter percentage, I think so. And so on Android, this placeholder is not called placeholder, it is called hint. It's giving you a hint. And we'll say enter percentage, press enter. Now, I don't like that it's aligned to the left, so I'm gonna go over to the bottom, scroll down to the bottom here and click text alignment, and we are gonna select center. Okay, that is looking good to me. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and copy this command C or control C if you're on windows and command V and it's going to have this little orange box that pops up and I'm just going to drag it right here and click. That's pretty cool. Let's you place it and I'll drag it over to center it the same as the other one, except here we're going to make it say enter number. So go to find the hint field hint. I lost the hint. Let's click this field here. Enter, here we go, enter number instead of enter percentage, okay? So what is, and it will show, it'll show this percent, uh, we probably need a percentage sign, so let's do that now. Let's command C and command V this text view, and let's put it right there. I'm gonna double click it and just put the percent sign and press enter. It's a little too far to the right, so I'm gonna move it over here, right next to this text field, and that's looking good. So. Basically, we're saying what is 15%, okay? And we would say of, so we don't have the of field here. So let's put that now, click the what is, command C, command V, and let's put it right here, okay? Double click it, of, and I don't think it actually needs a capital. Let's make it lowercase here. So what is 15% of, and then this is a little too close. Let's see if we can move it down. We might not be able to. We might have to set some padding here, but cl click and drag down your number. And yeah, it's having some issues spacing here. And so it's not doing what I want it to do. So what I can do is I can actually set some margin on the top of it. So it's a little bit further away from the of symbol here. So on the properties at the bottom right, scroll up to layout margin and expand it. And from the top, let's say we want it 10 from the top and it pushed that other right in the middle. Well, it looks like it's in the middle. Let's click, uh, it's a little bit off-centered here. Maybe actually we didn't need to change it at all. Maybe it was the layout guides that were messing with us here. So let's set it back to zero and see what it looks when I click off. You know what, that's not too bad. I can live with that. Yeah, you can always modify it later and play around some things. So what is 15% of enter number, that number? Very cool. What else are we missing? Well, we need some type of calculate button to actually perform the calculation. So let's do that now. On the left-hand side, you can just grab a button 
and drag it over in the middle somewhere. A little off centered, so I'm just gonna center it there. New button, I'm gonna double click it and we're gonna call this one calculate, all in capital letters, and that's looking good. Okay, that's looking nice. Now there's a couple things I don't like. I don't like the color of the button. I don't like this ugly blue, oh my goodness. And then this action button, we're not actually gonna need it there. So let's first off change the color of the calculate button. We can do that by going to background. And if we click that little three dots in the bottom right hand side, we get a nice little color picker here. And we can just pick a color that we feel is good for our application. That looks nice, it's a nice red, but the black doesn't look too great on it. So let's go ahead and change the color of the text down here. You can click in the field, and I'm sure you could do the same exact thing here, pick a color, you know, or we could do something different. We could do pound sign, F, 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 which is the hexadecimal value for white, and make it white, which I think is really nice. Now, what we could also do is make this button a little bit bigger so it just looks nicer. So let's try dragging things around. So notice how it's not liking what we're doing, right? But when you add both edges over there, it lets you expand it. So one rule of thumb when working with the Android designer is if it doesn't work on the first try, okay, try moving it around and messing with it in a different manner. Now, maybe you're saying that's not very scientific. Well, you may find yourself getting frustrated because it's not working the way you want, but you don't yet understand how things are working under the hood. It doesn't just put things pixel per pixel where you want them. It aligns things up based on the way Android XML layouts are set up. And so it only works in certain types of ways. So again, play around with it until you understand perfectly how it works behind the hood. And so now it's looking a little bit how I want it to look. Very nice. And what I'm gonna do is actually copy this color here in the background on the properties. I'm gonna control C it or command C because I wanna use it up here on this toolbar. Now, if you notice, I can't click the toolbar and change it. Well, that's because it's not in this layout. Remember, it's in the main activity. So it's just nicely showing us the, previous, the activity behind it, which is really cool. So there it is, you can click on it. And then what we can do is go down to background uh, right here. And I can just take all this off. Oops, I forgot the pound sign. There we go. So now we've got a nice red banner here and this nice red calculate button. At least I think it looks nice. I'm also gonna click this action button, this FAB, okay? And I'm gonna get rid of it by pressing the delete button. So that is now gone and things are starting to look nice. Okay, percentage of this number here. Now here's the question. How do we get code talking to the views? That is the real question of the day, isn't it? So go to your main activity.java. Oh, look at this pretty theme. You guys are like, this is so ugly. I think it's so cool. I feel like I'm making an iPhone app. <laughs> you know what I actually find is uh, I have to have the perfect environment, whether it's my house with the lighting, clean cleanliness of room, my IDE, everything has to be perfect so I can be in a good mood and theme when programming. Like I'm, I'm not one of those people who can just jump on any computer and start coding. Like I have to feel happy when I'm coding. And this makes me feel happy. Anyway, you're like, this guy's lame. Okay, so a few things to point out. We're not going in depth into everything because this is just an in intro video. It's already going longer than other people might make an intro video. So protected void on create. This on create function, okay, is part of the activity and it will be called automatically when it is time to create the views. And what happens is your code more or less will take your XML layouts and it will inflate them into actual visual things that you can see on the screen, run some code behind the scenes to inflate those layouts and make them into actual views. And so what we do here is in this onCreate function is we will grab the views from the XML layouts and we will assign them to the code, okay? If you are familiar with iOS development, this is similar to creating IB outlets where you can control drag from a control to the code Okay, although we don't get the luxury of that here with Android, we've got to manually connect these things up. So that's what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna make our code talk to our views. And so we know that we have to manipulate a few things or get data from a few things. One is we need to have the, the total view, which is a text view. We've got two edit text fields for entering data in, and then we've got a calculate button, which is just going to calculate the operation. So, Let's go ahead and enter 
the things that we need now. So text view in Java, you always put the type before the, and also notice here how it says Android widget. That's what you want. Sometimes there are other things that can that have similar class names as Android, but you always want to use the Android versions. Okay. So, uh, anyway, so yeah, the variable name in Java or the vari variable type goes before the variable name. That's what I meant to say type before name. And we're going to call this first text view. The, this is the label. So the total, we'll call this total text view. And I like to spell out what type of view it is just so in the code, I know I'm grabbing the right one. Okay. And what we're doing here is we're creating public instance variables here that we can later assign values to. Okay. So text view, total text view. And then we also have two edit text fields, right? So edit text. And the first one was percentage text. Or I can just call it TXT for short edit text. And one more, this one's going to be the number text where we put the number in. Okay. That looks good to me. And if we ever needed to mess with the button as far as like storing it or changing its name or whatever, we could, we could do that here. But since we're only uh, intercepting or setting a listener for the click event, we don't need to store these references here. And so the reason why I kept this floating action button uh, or I chose that template is so I, we could look at the default implementation of how to set a listener. So we can just follow suit here, which one of the ways that I always learn to code when I'm personally coding and learning new concepts is by looking at other people's code. Okay. So down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a button. This is an official Android button, as you can see, Android widget. And also every time you create an Android class or implement a class, it will automatically import the needed item at the top. Okay. Unlike iOS, if you're familiar with iOS development, you have a UI kit that includes all of these controls and you only make one import with Java you import the specific classes you need for your project explicitly. So we're going to say button, we're going to say calc button. Okay. Equals. And what we're doing here is we're casting. We're going to cast what the cast, the view that we're finding. So we're casting find view by ID and we're going to say R dot ID. Okay. Th these are official IDs that you've registered in your project and you'll notice something here. I'm looking for my percentage field, but it's not there. Okay. So if you're confused, let's make this less confusing. When I go back into my content main XML and I click my enter percentage. And if I scroll down here, this ID just says edit text. It's generic and it's not very useful. So instead what I need to call this is probably percentage TXT. Okay. Update usages as well. This will update all XML references and Java R field references. Okay. So what you change here in the ID is going to automatically change in Android's uh, R file, which stores all of your IDs. And this is what we want. And I'm going to click this button. So it doesn't show me this message again, because obviously I know it's going to do that. So I'm going to click yes. Then on this second one here, Okay. I'm going to scroll down to where ID is, and this is the number. So I'm going to call this number TXT, which is what I want. And did I give an ID to my calculate button? No, that just says button two. So let's go ahead and call this calc BTN. And then I believe we did set an ID on this guy here, which we did total text view. So now we've got the appropriate IDs set. So when I go back to my code, my main activity dot Java, Okay. And when I go into this find view by ID, now I could say R that's capital R by the way. Also keep in mind, there's Android different versions here. Android support, support, support. We don't want that. We want the R, R for our project, which is in this case, com.devslopes.math sucks. So we're going to say R dot ID and this is the button, right? So if I type in the letter C, there's my ID, which, which it wasn't there before. So that ID is now available. And the minute I do this, it is now tying this button in my code. It's now created a reference to this button that's in my XML layout. So if you're familiar with iOS development, this is the equivalent of connecting your IB outlet by dragging it over into your code where they connect. This is what we've just done right now. And of course it's grabbing a generic view from the layout file. So we have to explicitly cast it into a button saying, Hey, this view is a button. It's not an edit text field. It's not this, it's not that it's a button. So we're casting it here so we can appropriately appropriately use it. 
Okay, you with me so far? Okay. So, now that we've got our button reference and code, we need to set a listener on it. Okay, a click listener. And if you are familiar with iOS development, and I'll be saying this a lot, so please don't get angry with me if you're not familiar with iOS development. This is for the sake of all those iOS developers learning to code in Android. But anyway, this is equivalent to creating an IB action for a control on iOS. So let's go ahead and do that now. Calc button dot set on click listener. And you can actually just scroll down to whatever one you want and press enter. Ours is set on click listener. And I'm just actually looking at the example code above because it makes it nice and easy. And we can just say view dot on click listener. Okay. This cool anonymous function here, which will uh, create an inline function here for us that will be called. And so we're setting an on click listener. And what we need to do is override the on click function, okay, or on click method. Okay, in Java, these are called methods, not functions, although they are equivalent. We're going to say on click. So we're overriding the on click function. And we're overriding it on the on click listener function of our button. Okay, and so it'll take you a few times to get this right. Okay, so basically we've set the on click listener. We've set this anonymous class function here, which will be it's almost like an inline function or what you might call a block in Objective C or a closure in Swift. And basically it's going to, we're going to override this views this class that we're creating. Okay, this view class that we're creating. We're going to override its on click function for this button so we can perform an action. And this is where we're going to write our code to manipulate the views. However, if you've noticed, we have not referenced these views yet. Okay, we've done it for the button, but we haven't done it for these. So let's do that now. So we're going to say total text view equals and this is a text view. So we need to cast it to a text view. And we'll do the exact same thing. Find view by ID r dot ID. In this case, it's the total, right? So total text view, grab that ID that we created in our XML file to reference the correct view. And then percentage text equals, this is an edit text field, find view by ID, r dot ID dot percentage text. And one more is number text equals, this is edit text, find view by ID, r dot ID dot number text. So those are now referenced. Okay, so what we need to do is now run the math, and then take the values that are in the text fields, and then set the total based on the information that's in the text fields. So no big deal. That's not a big deal. So first off, let's go ahead and grab our percentage that the user has entered in. We'll do that right here. I'll make this even bigger. So you can see it here. And by the way, I'm doing command plus and command minus to make the font grow big and small, which is not enabled by default uh, in, uh, in the Android Studio settings, which is also available in my, in my settings file, which I'll make available to you. So what we want to do here is first grab the percentage, right? So uh, let's just call it a float because it could be a decimal value. So we're going to say float or float, and we're going to call this percentage equals and how do we get text from it well we can just do total not total uh, percentage percentage text dot get text so this is how you get text out of it right by doing get text now by default it's not actually giving you something that you can work with as a string or an integer so we actually have to cast it here so we can say to string so we're going to grab the text value out of the field and make sure it's converted properly to a string and what I'm actually going to do, so now that we've got the string, we will actually need to turn it into a value we can work with in mathematics, which is a float. So I'm going to command X to cut this. And what I'm going to do is call float dot parse float. And we're going to pass in the string there. Are you with me so far? So we're grabbing the text out of the text field, converting it to a string, and then taking that string and converting it into a float, which we're storing here in the percentage. Okay. Now, in order to properly do the math, our simple percentage math, we need to convert this percentage into a decimal. Do you remember how to do that? So we'll just say float DEC for decimal. And we're going to say equals percentage divided by 100. That's how we convert the 
um, percentage into a decimal. Now the last thing we need is the end result, right? So we can say float result or total, since we're saying the word total everywhere. Total is going to be equal to decimal multiplied by the amount that is in the number field. Okay, this is this right here is just uh, basic percentage mathematics. If you're not familiar with it, you can just look it up online, and uh, no big deal. So decimal times well, how do we get the value out? So it was number text. That's the name of the field. Dot get text. Dot two string. Okay, so we know that's what we need. But I'm going to go ahead and just command X this and parse this and do a float as well. Parse float and pass that right in there. So now we've got the total. Okay, all we have left to do now is assign that total into the total view. So easy as total text view dot set text. And we're just going to pass in total or float. Let's convert it to a string. Float dot two string, and we're going to pass in total. Okay, so we're calling the official two string function or method of float, and we're passing in the float value that we want to convert into a string, and we are setting that into our total text view text. Okay, so if all worked well in our code, it should be working in our program. So go ahead and just click the little play button here. And it should let you pick which emulator that you want to work with. You, you may have one running. I do not currently, but you should have it right here. Nexus 5. I'm going to click OK. And you'll see your emulator appear here. There's a little, nice little Android looking guy here. It'll take a moment to load. By the way, I recommend that you do not close your emulator once you've loaded it for the first time because it could take a while to load. And if you think it's broken, broken, don't worry. Uh, it will usually it will usually come. However, if it doesn't come, you can always look in your project for errors. And I think we do have an error that we need to fix. If you notice, everything has these red squigglies. You'd think that yelling at us one time would be enough, but no. And if you look down here in the console, Cannot find symbol variable fab. Well, there's a problem because what we did was we deleted the view from our XML layout, but we didn't delete it here from our code. So let's go ahead and do that now. Highlight anything that has to do with the fab, the floating action button, and just delete it. And save it. And then go ahead and try running it again. This time select the runner, the one that's already running. There it goes. No errors, no warnings. You can see the icon at the top right. It means it's successfully loaded and it will load it automatically for us here. Now we do have some problems with our layout. As you can see, it didn't do exactly what we thought it was going to do uh, when we actually dragged the controls into the application. And so let's go ahead and fix this problem here. You can see how the of is stuck in between the number and the percentage. So let's fix that now. If we go back to our code and go into content main, we're getting a few rendering problems here, um, which is problematic. We don't need to worry about some of these right now. What you can do is actually just click clear cache on this and it should show us what we need. Okay, so we are here and here's our file. It looks good here, but obviously it doesn't look great when we're inside of, uh, the, when it's actually run on a device. So let's let's talk about how we can fix this. So let's do some debugging. Your first look in debugging a problem. So click the of, and let's look over here on the right hand side and look at this layout alignment components here. So we've got some alignment things going on and it's relative to the other views here. If you notice, what it's saying is, hey, I want the bottom of this of label, this of view, I want the bottom of it to be at the top of number text. So the bottom right here is matching, as you can see, the top of this which is fine. But what's happening is it almost looks like this number percentage here. It almost looks like it's going down on top of it, which is not what we want. So what we can do is try something we can grab. Let's say if we align the top of of to the bottom of this percentage right here. So what we can say is the top. So the top of the of view, let's align it to the percentage text like so. Okay. So, but it's in this case, it's, excuse me, that's incorrect. We want, we want uh, 
the top bottom, not the top top. We want the top of the of the bottom of the second view. So the, the first the first side on here, the left side, is the first component, and the other side is the second component. So what we're saying here is grab the top of the of view and align it to the bottom of whatever view we're going to select. In this case, we're going to say percentage text. Okay? See how it looks? Okay. And I, it's a little bit too close, I think. So what I'd like to do is select of again, and this time on the layout margin in the top, let's set five. Just give it a little bit of padding. It's not enough. Let's make it 10 and see how it looks. Looks good to me. Now let's see if it actually looks good in the app. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Just click OK. There it goes. And we lost our of label. <laughs> actually, it kind of looks nice without it, uh, but I want to fix it. So let's. I'm not going to play around anymore. I'll show you. I'll show you a solution that actually works here. But uh, those are some very important information you need to know that you can actually align components. What's happening here is there's not enough spacing in the components uh, between the top one and the bottom one, so there's it's smashing the of out of there. So let's fix this here. Let's take our of label here and let's go to the layout settings here. Just delete the uh, the layouts of this of label here. What I'm going to do is drag this calculate button further down. Okay, drag it over, and I'm going to drag this enter number field down here, and I'm going to drag this of and set it right there, right in the middle. Command save, and let's run it. Again, when you're working with the visual layout editor, uh, you have to play around with things because it's doing very specific operations behind the scenes, and uh, I don't typically always build all my layouts with the, the visual editor here, and so this is good enough for now. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. The of, it's it's closer to where we want it to be. But you're going to learn later on how to take your views and actually modify them in the XML layouts to make them exactly perfect because the visual layout editor has some caveats. So let's just see if our, if our entire app works here. Okay, so what's a percentage we know of? So let's say 10%, okay? of what is 10% of 100 if I click calculate it says 10 I think that's correct let's take a look at our uh, calculator over here let's try a different one that look that is correct by the way let's say what is 15% of 2500 I know their calculator works so let's click it so 15% of 2500 is 375 let's do the same math over here I'm going to say what is 15% of 2500 and click calculate and it is 375 mine adds a zero so there's some more formatting we could do but that's it you've just built your very first android application your view is talking to your code we purely use the layout editor which we could play around with it wouldn't be hard to get this of thing where it needs to be in fact do it on your own play around with this some more in fact i recommend that you actually do some of these other calculations in here as well too. build up build out this calculator here uh, but that's it android very first Android app for you there. Mark Price here at devslopes.com. Exciting times. See you later.